Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a user form and work with the worksheets event to make that user form open. Okay, so let's get going. First of all, we need to go to the options menu to make sure your developer toolbar is enabled. So you go to file, options, customize ribbon, and on the right hand side you can see uh, there should be an option for the developer toolbar. You may need to make sure that that's clicked. Otherwise, if that wasn't clicked, you could use Alt and F11 to get into the Visual Basic Editor window. So, let's access Visual Basic. Okay. And what we're going to do is go to the Insert menu at the top of the Visual Basic Editor, the VBE window, and click Insert. And then I want to do a user form. Okay. This is what the user form design screen looks like. I want to call the for user form FRN splash screen or whatever you're going to use it for. Caption splash splash screen. Okay. And then in the form editor menu, I want I want to also change the back color because I don't look like that boring grey. I'm going to change it to the highlight color. Uh, right, okay, and what I want to do is give it a label. So that's the label command. You've got your text box, so that's when you type text in, the user types text, or you can use it as a calculator or create your own little kind of kind of text entry windows for users. I can go through that in more detail, but it'll be a lot longer video than this one. Um, combo box so we'll just stick on the basics for now combo box it drop down list you can go through the add item um, property to add each item to that combo box but I'll show you about that in due course list box a checkbox so yeah I want to check that that's quite handy sometimes radio button similar toggle frame you can put a frame on that just frames whatever you can do but we're not using that for the time being uh, I want to put a picture in there's your multi -tab, tab strip and your multi page. So, if you've ever seen user forms with one, two, three, four, so there's different options you can select through. That's what that does. Uh, there's a scroll bar on the side, spin button, an image. So, I want an image as well. So, the label, and that is a ref edit image. Um, I want to I want to change the caption of this label. I want to call it uh, Gary's user form. Gary's me, by the way. And if this is your first video, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'm going to make it 20 in bold. I'm going to make that a bit smaller so I can then put it in the center like this. Gary's user form. Uh, I want the four colours, so the font to be different. So I'm going to go to the palette. No, not red. Not red on blue. That's not right. Dark red. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So, and then from there, I'm going to name it LBL Gary. This is going to be image, so IG or IMG. Um, Excel, because I've got a Excel logo saved on my desktop. Uh, and then when the user scrolls over it, you can set the control tip text. You've seen this on the web, so when you hover over something, it comes up with a little yellow box that tells you a description. So Microsoft Excel Specialist. Okay. Um, you can change the mice so, icons if you want. If you've got some ICO files, is it ICO? Yeah, it's ICO. Um, and change the mouse pointer when it hovers over. And then I want a picture that I've got saved onto my desktop. It's an Excel image, the Excel logo, as you can see there. Okay, let's just open this out a bit. The image is a bit too big. So let's do a bit of jink jangling around and put that on the top right I'm going to put my user form description there I just there we go <coughs> and put that there you can make the back color you can also change that to highlight 
so it fits in a bit better. And you can check, you can actually set the border color to kind of a scroll bar. Uh, it's a bit of a mess, but it will do. And then what I'm going to do, sorry if you didn't see that, I've I clicked command button, I dropped, it, dragged it down, or you can just double click like that onto the screen. Oops, it's gone into the design bit, a bit premature there. I want to go back into my flash screen and view object. I'm going to get rid of that command button too, and then I'm going to select her again, select object, command button name uh, CMD exit go away Kaspersky and caption close so the only thing left to do now would be to handle the close button so you can either select it with your left left mouse button then right click go to view code or you can just double left click on it like that so let's get rid of that one a private sub it's private because it's only it can only be accessed by this user form and that's how you want to leave it if you set it public you can actually access it from a module outside and you don't really want to do that in a user form right so the only the only bit of code we need here which makes it quite a simple task to do is unload FRM splash screen or alternatively you could put unload me. Me stands for any form within any <coughs> access or Excel applications. So what what will that do? Let's 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 play it and see what happens. So this is my script user form not probably familiar to you. You use a lot of these applications every day that are designed in this way. Excel is just a glorified version of this. It's got a command strip and like like we showed you a multi-tab list at the top. That's a multi-tab section, just a bit more fancy. The developers are better than me at Microsoft. Or have got more time on the hand, should I say? So as you can see, because I changed the mouse pointer, it changes when I go over there you wouldn't really use that and the control tip text comes up Microsoft Excel specialist so the only bit that I can click here is the close button so I click close and it gets rid of the form but say I wanted to put a message box on there so I'm going to dim it as my message you'll see what I mean in a second and string and then I'm going to set my message equals message box prompt do you want to exit um, and then I'm going to have a VB question because it's a question and I'm going to put a VB yes and no as well okay and then I'm going to title it exit user form Oops, need the parentheses. So, the reason I've done that is because I want to be able to use some an if, if and else construct to basically make some decisions for me. So I'm going to put if my message, which is my message message box, do you want to exit all that text afterwards, preceding it. If my message equals VB yes, then VB yes relates to this part of it, VB yes. You can also state if it's VB no. Then I want to actually, I want to unload the, the splash screen, so I'm just going to kind of indent it there. And if, I want to actually put, if I put else in, else if my message equals VB no then what have I done? Oh yeah, else if needs to be together. Sorry it's different on certain programming languages, just come from C sharp again. Else if my message equals VB no then message box. Let's make it a bit 
adamant. Why did you say no? Actually, put exclamation marks there. BB critical. But that's just a joke. And then I'm going to exit sub because I want it to return to the user form. And end if. So let's let let's run that. So basically, what I've done is dim my message to string. My message box. Do you want to exit? Da -da -da -da. VB question plus VB yes no exit user form. If my message equals VB yes, then unload form splash screen. Uh, that's just to comment it out. Else if my message equals VB no, then message box. Why did you say no VB critical? Okay, let's see what it does. So, do you want to exit? Which is what I've just programmed there. If I click, if you click yes, then it just exits the user form. It unloads it. If you click no though, it gets a bit more mad with you and uh, shouts at you basically. Why did you say no? But once you've pressed OK, it will return. So it won't actually let you go anywhere a lot. As you can see. Yeah. But you wouldn't really, con you'd, you'd sometimes put that as a, that's an error message normally. It comes up when there's something wrong or the code's not executed properly. So you wouldn't normally put that, but you can exit user form from there and then it unloads it. The last step, because we've created the user form, so the last step really, I just need to save it onto my desktop. Yeah, and what you then need to do, sorry about that error message, is go to the workbook and toggle the workbook event. So, workbook, and then as you can see, there's an absolute wealth, a plethora of um, events that you can use. But on this one, I'm actually, I actually want it onto the workbook open event. So, what I want to do is when the workbook opens, I want to show the form splash screen. And then, when you open the workbook again, the splash screen will appear. The splash screen will appear like this as soon as it opens. And as soon as you click your close button, it will exit and that's basically as simple as it is I know it's taken a while to demonstrate it but user forms do take a bit of design and a bit of care about how you're going to design it what code you want to put into it but you can research other user form methods on the internet but I will show you a few more techniques in um, videos that precede this um, not precede videos that um, I load on afterwards I can't speak today I do apologize so I hope that was informative uh, thanks very much for watching please subscribe hope to have a lots more videos available on YouTube when I can when I get time all right thanks guys thanks for your patience cheers